All right, guys, I'm the first uh, negative speaker. So I'd like to start from with a quote from the former U.S. Department of Energy, oh, uh, U.S. Department of Energy official, uh, Joseph Braun. He was interviewed on the topic of hydrogen in vehicles, and this is what he had to say. A hydrogen car is one of the least efficient, most expensive ways to reduce greenhouse gases. When asked when hydrogen cars would be broadly available, Ron replied, not in our lifetime and very possibly never. There's been a lot of hype over the last few years regarding hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. The idea in theory is brilliant. It is a vehicle that uses hydrogen instead of gas to produce only water from the tailpipe. Many have said that hydrogen, hydrogen will be the fuel of the future, but it also has many problems. Um, currently, the price of hydrogen is too high. It produces too many emissions and is not nearly as, as efficient as electric and hybrid vehicles that are being produced today. When comparing different energy sources by cost per gigajoule, the, resu the results were unexpected. Coal can cost anywhere between $1 and $3 Natural gas costs about $5, and petrol will cost $10 a gigajoule. Hydrogen, on the other hand, can cost anywhere between $5 and $58 per gigajoule to produce. The reason for this large discrepancy is because of the large variety of ways to produce hydrogen. The cheapest methods are the most widely used, but they are also the least friendly to the environment. Although many people regard hyd hydrogen as one of the largest potential clean energy sources of the future, its production is not as clean as most think. The biggest obstacle can be finding a cheap way to mass produce hydrogen. Hydrogen itself is not an energy source, it is a carrier of energy, similar to a battery. It must first be produced by another energy source before it can be used. The two most prominent methods of hydrogen production are steam reformation and coal. Both, rele both release large amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which undermines the entire point of hydrogen cars in the first place. According to America's National Renewable Energy Laboratory, producing a kilogram of hydrogen through steam reformation creates 11.9 kilograms of CO2 byproducts. In 2008, Chevy released a special fuel cell version of their crossover SUV, the Equinox. Equinox can travel 39 miles on one kilogram of hydrogen. Powering these cars using hydrogen produced by steam reformation would result in emissions of 305 grams of CO2 for every mile traveled. The Honda FCX Clarity has been praised by the automotive press and has been called the best hydrogen fuel cell vehicle yet. Instead of taking a normal gas-powered vehicle and simply putting a fuel cell engine into it, Honda built the Clarity from the ground up. Uh, from, its, uh, from its conception, it was always designed to be a fuel cell vehicle. It maximizes uh, the fuel cell layout and maximizes the gas mileage as well. It goes an astonishing 69 miles on one kilogram of hydrogen. This sharp rise in gas mileage means the Clarity only produces 175 grams of CO2 per mile. Um, but to put this in comparison, the hybrid Toyota Prius produces only 167 grams per mile, and other small cars have very similar outputs. Uh, so as you can see, from an environmental standpoint, there's no benefit from switching to a hydrogen system. In fact, the CO2 emissions are actually higher than in current hybrid electric cars. Unless we find an entirely different me method of hydrogen production that is created or discovered, um, uh, there's, there will be no uh, drop in price. Duncan McCloyd, the vice president of Shell Hydrogen, said, if all we can do is make hydrogen from gas, we shouldn't even start the journey. Serious breakthroughs in production would have to be at hand for hydrogen to even be a, vi a viable method of widespread travel. The efficiency of hydrogen versus electric also comes into question. Well to wheel is a term used to compare the relative efficiency of different types of fuel. It measures the efficiency of a fuel, a fuel cycle from extraction all the way till consumption. Tesla Motors compared uh, the well to wheel efficiency of their all electric roadster against that of the Honda SCX Clarity. The Tesla Roadster was able to manage 
1.14 kilometers per megajoule of energy used. They then examined this FCX clarity data, which was independently tested by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency earlier that year. The clarity managed only 0.35 kilometers per megajoule. In this set of tests, the Tesla, a, 400, a 248 horsepower electric sports car, performed 326% more efficiently than the 136 horsepower economy-based hydrogen vehicle. Honda's own hybrid vehicle, the Insight, managed only 0.64 kilometers per megajoule, or, or, but still almost twice as efficient as the Clarity. In fact, the efficiency rating of the FCX was so low that it was even surpassed by a Porsche 911 Turbo. It is also worth noting that the Clarity had the highest efficiency of any hydrogen fuel cell vehicle the EPA had ever tested. The SDX Clarity is by far the best built hydrogen car yet, but it's still bound by its limited range of its fuel cell. Currently, the SDX um, has a range of approximately 20, 270 miles. Although this might not seem like a small amount considering the relative uh, mileage in other gasoline cars, um, you have to take into account the availability of a filling station. With a traditional gasoline power car, you can run your you run your tank down to 95% empty, and the 5% left, you can hobble your way to the nearest conveniently located gas station. But with a hydrogen car, your options are a lot more limited. Currently, there's only 71 hydrogen filling stations operational in all of the U.S. and Canada. Uh, there's 42 planned, but um, not operational at this time. This would mean, in order to refill, you'd have to plan your trips around, around refueling and effectively eliminate all possibilities of any going, ever going on any kind of road trip. It would simply be a car solely used for commuting and no other purpose. Uh, there, there, has been, there have been varying numbers as to how much an effective uh, hydrogen filling in infrastructure would cost, but Shell, who operate a hydrogen station in Washington, D.C., quoted their production cost at over $2 million just for that single station. Hydrogen, hydrogen technology is still developing and has a long way to go. It will need to be cleaner, cheaper, and much more readily available for it to be a solution. Electric and hybrid technology, technology are in a stage of evolution. The technology has been successfully put into place for over a decade now, and it continues to improve. Having the government choose fuel cells as their primary alternative energy source would be a step backwards away from an evolving system with endless benefits and towards an undeveloped system whose fuel, fuel production alone undoes all the pros of having a car that does not burn any emissions. Thank you.